Welcome to Top Hill Recording Podcast, the podcast where we ask an artist, a musician, a band to come on, give us four original tunes. We sit and talk about those tunes, where they came from, where we're going, where we've been. And tonight, we have a very, very talented songwriter, singer, musician, um, and we are very, very fortunate to have her. Came in to killer tunes as expected. Uh, and we are delighted to have with us tonight, Kate Justice. Nights drinking 
Met a boy in a band down in Alabama. Well, he sure knew how to party and he never let it in. Wrote some songs while we were too messed up to drive. It gets so hard to stay inside him when you've had too many lines. Good with his hands when it came to playing poker. Had me play some bets and banking on some health Talker, but he gives me what I need Spent a lot out at his place up on the ridge He had me singing like a songbird all the way to the hills Not with him, well I don't worry about the blues There's never anything in Southern Comfort can't do Pick a bed and rest my head
How's it going? Good. How are you all doing? Doing good. Hey, you uh, came in and nailed it, man. Uh, love. Mm-hmm. I, well, you've been in the studio here before. We we were fortunate enough to get uh, you in to do some recording. And then I, we dropped the ball on our end, getting that taken care of. So it's actually great to have you in tonight and to have... Uh, have you get not only a couple of those tunes, but a couple of new tunes as well. Throw in a couple more in there. Yeah. More. Man, um, your voice is just awesome. It's so awesome to hear you sing live. So, uh, you know, good stuff. Yeah, thank you very much. We thank like to pat much. people on the back immediately. Appreciate it. <laughs> I pump up my ego a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, first time on, a lot of times we'd like to just, you know, go back and have, we'll ask you the same thing we ask most people, you know, uh, take us back to the first time you can remember, like, music catching you as a kid, knowing that, like, it had to be something that you wanted to do uh, as far back as you can remember. I think, like, a lot of musicians in this area, it started in church. Um, I think I was singing before I could talk, really, you know, like humming along to, to songs and stuff like that. Um, and I grew up uh, Church of Christ, which doesn't have instruments. It's just singing. Um, and so that's, you know, I started singing. We didn't have like a church choir. It was like the the church was the the choir. Um, and I just, some of my earliest memories are singing along to songs that like, you know, even if I was too young to really understand the words, uh, the feeling behind them, you know what I mean? And so that was what really got me was like all of these people singing, you know, just in, in unison and like the the feeling that it gave me. Um, and so I started doing music uh, all through school as soon as I could. Um, I can't really remember a time where music wasn't a part of my life or it wasn't in my life. It wasn't a core part of my life. I can't, I think separating me from music is just not possible. That, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And it uh, what also uh, should probably be explained is that it was the Church of Christ, not the Church of Christ, which means you are from Pikeville, Pikeville. originally. <laughs> it's not Pikeville, it's Pikeville. It's Pikeville, okay. Pikeville. So uh, growing up in Pikeville, uh, or Pikeville, <laughs> I apologize, um, which my buddy here went to college. So. I did, yeah. We talked yeah. a little bit about it. I, I have like a very special place in my heart for Pikeville in Eastern Kentucky. I had a great time being out there. Sunday Best, like we talked about, inspired me to like make music. Mm-hmm. I even recorded my album out at the Mountain Arts Center because I mm-hmm. just, I enjoy it out there that much. So, yeah. Yeah. Big fan of, of Pikeville. I don't think you said it right, but still. I don't. I, think like, <laughs> I say it the same way people there would say Louisville or something. Nobody yeah. like, says Louisville. This Whatever. is not. This is the hill I will die on. Nobody <laughs> says Louisville. It's no. Louisville. That's so, Louisville. Okay. Yeah. 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 Then I should yeah. yeah. so be saying? able to say it. Yeah. Pikeville. Yeah. So, uh, Pikeville. Pikeville in the Church of Christ. Did was was um what type of music was that? Was it uh, piano driven? Was it hymn driven? Was there a band up there? How how was that conducted? Yes, yeah, so it was no instruments in, in Church of Christ. Was it was just you know acapella, just singing you know unison. Um, <laughs> sometimes we'd split it up into parts, but mostly it was just like you know everybody sang sang the melody. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I'm very honestly, I, I consider myself very lucky to be from Pockville when it comes to music because they're just so many talented people. Maybe mm-hmm. it's something in the Mountain Dew. I don't There's know what they're putting I, well, out there. Look, on, on this paper, Earl, I want you to see it. What's in the water of Eastern Kentucky? I wrote that on there because, I mean, it's just, it, there's something about part of what you're talking about, the 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 feeling, not even knowing what it was when you were a kid, but knowing there was an emotion or some type of mm-hmm. feeling that it made you feel and, and, and emoted for you. And, you know, I, I can only imagine the education you got with no instruments and having to hear that vocalization. I, I wonder if part of part of the melody lines and the, the melody driven stuff um, uh, in some of the music from Eastern Kentucky these days is driven from that. I wonder if you took a uh, asked all the musicians that are coming out of there that are just like you know the Hunter Flins and those guys like that, the Emily Jamersons. Uh, I even, although you're here now, I consider you uh, that as well, an Eastern Kentucky musician. Um, I wonder if a lot of those folks had music that was like that, that was that was 
acapella driven where you heard parts. I mean, there's an education in here and where this voice should be and this voice should be and this mm-hmm. voice is to create that chord that that as a kid, you don't know what that is, but you know that like even you listening. You feel it. Yes. And you even listening to, to to your original stuff. I mean, there's a lot of minors in there that, that like that bring you in emotionally mm-hmm. and then add your vocal melody lines and that type of stuff. It just, it, it all kind of makes sense for me uh, in, in a way. So now that I've talked too much, take us back to, uh, you know, coming up in that, um, in Pikeville, coming up through the church. When did you, did you, were you singing uh, like soloist or were you doing any of that stuff like stepping in front and being the center of attention in any way? I didn't really start doing that until I was in high school. Um, But I did, I grew up doing like theater and stuff like that. Um, I did a lot of shows at Ginny Wiley. It's now the Appalachian Center for the Arts. Um, Oh, cool. But I I grew up, I did a lot of Shakespeare actually. Really? That was my bread and butter with some Shakespeare. Um, I did some musical theater, um, but I didn't start doing solo things, you know, in, in choir, like high school choir until probably my senior year. Um, and then in college, I did, I still did music. I did a little bit. Um, but going back to what you were talking about, um, about how like growing up like that, hearing those those melodies and kind of the way that it comes through, I think that a big part of people that are from Pockville or even Eastern Kentucky is storytelling. Mm. I think that's like a huge part of the culture over there. And so that just... It's just inherent, you know, whenever you do write songs that they're, you can't really, you can't, you can tell somebody how you're feeling, but you can't make somebody feel an emotion that you're feeling. But I think music is the closest way to get there. And so whenever you write songs, it's just the best way for you to beam whatever you're feeling in your head into somebody else's. If that that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think that was a very good way to put that too. And the way like you write these songs, there's so many like almost like one liners in some of them that just like, draw you in. And I feel like you could go through this and you could never like name all the little hooks in these songs. Like they're very well written. There's all kinds of, there was the one tune in particular where there's that B section that comes out of like nowhere. Um, And it's just like, I mean, yeah, me and Neil both just looked at each other like, oh, this is just took a turn. And it it, very, very cool stuff. Like I love the way you write stuff because like we, we have had like other people from Eastern Kentucky and what you are doing is, is like, different and original and it's it's original well, thank you very it, much. but you still get, still get that, that spirit of that but it is like your own thing it's it's it was it, it's been a good night yeah <laughs> yeah it's been it's been cool um yeah. i wanted to ask a couple things too because i know you're new to louisville tell us a little bit about like the move what brought you here kind of what you've been doing music wise here in town because like you're i i have been fo- i do actually i realized today i follow you on instagram but i don't um, your name was kind of new to me when I first saw you on the schedule. So I've looked into you today, but I would love to hear more about like you in town because I've not seen you around town. Yeah. So funny story about Louisville. When I was, Pockville was, uh, you know, the biggest town that I had been in for a long time, which like if you've been to Pockville is not, you know, um, I had traveled a little bit, um, but it wasn't until after I graduated, I actually came to Louisville for the first time. Uh, I graduated high school as a, a gift. I got to go see a Broadway show here in Louisville. And funny enough, I remember looking at my aunt and being like, I'm going to live here one day. Just like kind of as like an offhand comment, but then it, it ended up happening. I, you know, I graduated in 2019, which was prom, uh, prom oh, time for fun. the Rona to hit. Uh, so I got one normal semester of college in and then COVID hit. Um, now I had to move back to Pockville. And so it was, I want to say the end of 2021, I was like, I just need to get out of here because I, I just wanted to see what else there was. I just wanted to see what else there was. You know, I'd spent, I, I went to Moorhead for college. Um, so I didn't really go that far from home. Um, moved to Louisville. Uh, I was waitressing for a long time, did a whole bunch of jobs. I actually, it, during my day job now uh, is uh, I'm a law clerk, a paralegal. I'm going to law school, oh, um, cool. which is like what I do by day. But um, I didn't start doing music at all, really, um, until I'd say a little over a year ago. Um, I went to Alley Fest in Paintsville and I was lucky enough to, I was helping a friend out with some photography and I got to meet a lot of the musicians that were playing and they were so kind to me, so kind to me. And, you know, I didn't bring a guitar or anything. I didn't, uh, I had just started writing songs as a way to kind of deal with some things that I was going through. You know, uh, music was, it it always been a release for me, but I had never thought about what if I, what if I tried it? What if I did something, you know, but, um, 
you know, they they had an extra guitar and I was like, well, let me just pluck around on it. And I, I played some stuff for them and they were like, you really should, you know, just record. What's the worst that could happen? Just record something. And then it's all all been uphill from there. I would say downhill, but honestly, it's been pretty great. It's been it's all uphill from there. Um, I do, I try to do as many shows as I can in Louisville, but you know, I'm still, I'm still in school. I'm going, I'm working full time, um, just squeezing in music wherever I can just for, for fun. But it's, it's definitely a therapy for me. Um, very, you know, I'm lucky to be here, honestly, you know, to, to be able to share, you know, I always call my silly little songs with people like these stuff that I just write in my bedroom for my cat to hear. And then other people actually, you know, want to want to hear them. It still blows my mind. Um, I've got a, I've got a couple more shows coming up. I can't remember off the top of my head where they are, but but okay. and, and you've also uh, just played your first band show. I did. Um, so very funny story about that. I played at the Monarch uh, Terra Firma. Michael Logsdon does this radio show called Terra Firma, and I was on that back in February. And so they had a show at the Monarch for their three year anniversary. Uh, and so uh, I went, I went, I played and the first people to go on, it was Brady Evan and Peter Lahneman. I love Brady. Yeah, super nice. Guy. They're I like love Brady. the best people. And so they were the first ones to go on. There was like 13 artists playing that night. And I walk in and they're the first people to go on. Brady just like plays the most heart wrenching songs that I've ever heard in my entire life. And he's like, well, I got to go to work. So I'm going to leave. And he's got that voice too. Her, yeah. her. He's it's there so, for like all of 15 so... minutes. And it just like blew my, it like came uh, out of left field, like hit me in the, in the jaw, like a left hook. I was like, voice. man. So and so it was like a potluck style thing. So I'm back there like shoving cheese cubes in my face. And Brady <laughs> walks in the kitchen and I'm like, dude, I was like, that was incredible. Oh my, I'm like, where, where did you come from? You know? And we, we talked for just a little bit. Um, and then he left. Uh, and then Peter messaged me the next week and was like, hey, uh, we, we didn't get to stick around to see you play, but we saw some of your stuff on Facebook. Do you want to come over and like, we're having rehearsal. You should just come jam with us. And I was taught Stranger Danger. I swear to God I was. <laughs> but I, I, you know, for some reason I was like, it's worse that could happen. And so I went over and that was the first time I had ever really played with people. Um, I just, I get real, uh, you know, in my head about, you know, playing songs for other people and then playing with other people also. But it was just so natural with them. It was it was just an instant like I, I it like you walk into somewhere you've never been and you know your home kind of mm -hmm. thing. Like I, I played music with them and I've never met two people that just it's like they're in my head whenever we're writing songs together and whenever we're playing together. So I did we did our first show together uh this past weekend and it was it was incredible. It was amazing. It's it's awesome. I've never felt I think I told you I've never felt more like a musician than I did until yeah. that show, which was <laughs> amazing. Yeah, they're both they're both the best. Yeah, no doubt. When did, so when did you start writing? Like I, like your own songs? I would I, tentatively I want to say it's back when I was in high school I like gave it a shot but it's like, you know, teenage angst like, you know, yeah. like I'm going to lock myself in my room. I cry all the time. Like, you know, <laughs> like stuff like that. Um I just just to try my hand at it, but I didn't start writing songs, like full songs that I actually put my heart into till probably about Two years ago, that's I would crazy. say. So that's it's crazy still because recent. It, they're, they're so, uh, you know, I, I you talk about the storytelling. They're so well rounded. They really do all uh, tell a story, which I, I love. I, that's my hardest thing to do when I write a, a tune is try is to round out a thought enough to tell the complete story and be in and out. Um, and, and you do that really, really well, really naturally for somebody that's only uh, seriously been doing it for a couple of years. So, I mean, um, it, I don't know. I don't know if that thing, if it's something, like I said, in the water, something if that's in the just water. ingrained yeah. <laughs> in, in part of the, the culture of uh, Packville. <laughs> but it really is, it really is kind of uh, mind-blowing. It is. Oh, yeah. Because like we get all kinds of acts in here and, just about everyone that comes in is is pretty damn good. And sometimes I'm in there just like more jamming to the music, like especially if it's like a full band, depending on what they're doing and not always like locked in on the words. But you're, you are just like a great storyteller. And like I was kind of got at earlier, I feel like every song, like every line is something that like makes you just want to listen to like, what is the line? Like, because like there's like something coming and it, it's, it's, it's very, it's cool. And it's always interesting to see someone um, who's new to songwriting. Like there's someone around town, Taylor Catherine, who I think actually mm -hmm. texted Neil at the beginning of this yeah. podcast. But yeah. same way, she's kind of brand new to songwriting and is one of the best songwriters in town. And it's just crazy to me that to just be a couple years in and write tunes like this, it, it'll be neat to hear what you do and like 
three or four, five I, years? Like, what kind of it's, crazy well, stuff you'll be coming up with? It's in, it's it is interesting because you know you were in. It's been a while since you've been here. It's been I don't know a long time uh, and recorded those tunes. And you, your your guitar playing's better. But not only that, hearing the new, the boy in the band or boy in a band, boy in... I don't even know what the Whatever, the title whatever is. it was that... You, uh, wait, wait, I can tell you what you have. Boy, boy in, in a, a band. band. Boy in a band. Um, just, just hearing that song and how much uh, thought process you put into the songwriting aspect of like key change and doing that, the part that Earl was talking about earlier... Um, just shows that, that there's an evolution as well. It's not only um, can you write good lyrics, because a lot of people, uh, I don't know a lot of people, but people can write good lyrics and that can be their thing and they can write it in, you know, uh, GCD, every, you know, just real structured and a real clear pattern that stays in kind of that circle of things. But to see that there is an evolution already uh, in in a couple of years of you writing songs, that's that's pretty awesome to know is that something that you think about now that you're um, continuing to write? Do you think about all right? I don't want to stay doing the same thing. I need to switch it up, or is it just go where it takes you and that's where it took you? First of all, thank you all for being so nice about my my songwriting. Um, <laughs> I, I think I would consider that my my strong point. Um, I'm trying to work on every aspect of music. Um, you know, I'm not the strongest guitar player necessarily, um, but I'm trying to work on that too. So like anytime I'm writing a song, I have a really bad habit of starting a song, I'll write like a verse or a chorus and then I won't even look at it for months or weeks at a time. And then I'll like wake up in the middle of the night and be like, I have to finish it. And then I, and then I you know, write it all out in, in one evening. Um, my songs either tend to come out in like 15 minutes or like over the course of a couple months. Um, I try to write whatever I'm feeling at the time. And I think that's also maybe why I take breaks in between songs. Because yep. um, I want it to... You can't force it. I want it to feel like it's... You know, I I always say that I, when it, it's so scary putting out songs because it feels like I really am taking a piece of my heart or my soul and just like handing it to mm -hmm. people and being like, look at this, please. You know, like yeah. this is a this is a part of me that I'm sharing with you. Um, even the fun songs still, you know, are... A little, little bit of a, a piece of me. Um, so, yeah. And then going back to, you know, being from Appalachia, storytelling being such an integral part of who we are as like a people. I think um, it just... I always want to write songs that feel true to what I'm trying to say. Even if the story isn't necessarily mine. You know, I mean, a lot of these songs aren't about... A lot of them are about things that I've gone through, but some of them aren't. Some of them are just fun. But it's always somebody's story that I'm trying to tell and I want it to be as authentic as I can, as I can make it. Do you set out with that intent? Uh, it, it, when you start writing, putting together a song, do you put... Um, is there always intent? Or sometimes do you go... Sometimes in those cases where you write maybe a, a quick verse and chorus and then stop, is that something that like something that just hits you and you write it down real quick, there isn't maybe, it doesn't start with an intent, but after you throw that down, you gather one and maybe that's kind of what sets you back because you go, all right, well, this is about this. Now I really got to kind of think about it. Or, or, or you know what I mean? Is it always mm -hmm. intentional? I think it's a mix of both. Sometimes, um, you know, a, a line will just come to me and I'll either, you know, I'll, I'll have... Honestly, I, when I die, I hope somebody just deletes my entire notes app because there are so many just like <laughs> one-liners in there. I mean, there's so many of just things that will that will hit me and I'll write it down and um, it'll either, you know, sometimes it turns into a full song right then. Sometimes it turns into a chorus or a verse or a couple lines and sometimes it just sits. I got to let it marinate for a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but usually there, if there's not an intent, maybe like a specific story, there's always a feeling. And maybe I'll craft the story around that or vice versa. It just it just depends. You uh while you were talking about your your notes and, and your death and hoping somebody reads your notes, what it made me think about is every funeral should everybody should have their notes printed 
next to their casket or like one of no. those prints. Like that's just a the same that's I will never die if that's the case. Thought. That's hey, a dangerous erase game. Erase what you need to. I mean, I, I think you've I, just I, found the key to immortality right there. Yeah. I will, I'm going to stop songwriting, honestly. All my, yeah. I mean, you're going to write garbage, but I mean, I, I don't write anything where I wouldn't care if anybody else sees it because I'm going to be dead and it's going to be dumb. It's going to be stupid, like, uh, you know, one line's trying to write a song or trying to be funny. But I don't know, man. Is that dangerous? Oh, yes. yeah. You never know what, what is in somebody's notes. And once you get into the notes, there's no turning back. Like, Sometimes once you ignorance see it, is bliss. <laughs> yes. yeah, oh, ignorance I don't want to see like my... Bliss. some Like some members of my family, they can keep it. They can keep it in the notes app. <laughs> Far there's away from me. There's a lot of things I would want to know about inside of, you know, family life. <laughs> 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 Woo! Yeah. All right. I apologize. Take all that back. No notes on the funeral. <laughs> If that ever happens, it's all my fault. All right, so uh, you got the band now that you're that, which I do think will also change your songwriting because once you start really bouncing these ideas and and doing those things, that's going to change the not only change it but just make it better. You'll you'll uh, get new ideas, and uh, I think that that's always a, a plus to have people to bounce off of. Um, yeah, absolutely. I feel like it already has, honestly. Yeah. You know, me and like Brady is an, a fantastic singer, songwriter, guitar player. Um, Peter's been playing, he calls it a violin, it's a fiddle. He's been playing the fiddle for, mm -hmm. you know, basically his entire life. And I didn't realize until they played with my songs that there was, there, you know, I like them as they are with just, you know, my voice and the guitar, but it was like there were puzzle pieces missing that I didn't even know were supposed to be there until, you know, Peter added some fiddle parts to my stuff. Brady was like, well, what if you did this here? Or the, he, you know, he adds like stuff to it and it just makes it feel, it makes it feel fuller. Oh, yeah. You know, and you know, Brady and I have written um, a couple songs together that we're working on that we're wanting to record and do something with. And he, he's inspired me more than anything. I mean, just, you know, the way that he, like his creative writing process, I think is a lot similar to mine. And we write a lot of similar songs. So it just, it just flows naturally. It's almost like sometimes the songs are like a conversation. That makes sense. So I'm very, very lucky that they, you know, asked me to to come jam with them, and now now we're here. We don't have a band name yet, TBA, but TBA. Right, let's uh, let me think. Fiddle. Brady's playing guitar. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, we got to think about this, y'all. All right. All right, uh, Max. I did want to ask you, like, uh, Packville, growing up in. Musical theater and having the the influence that sh that that Kate grew up. What do you, what do you think about that? Like, how do you think as a musical theater kid? Has it how would that shape some of the songwriting now that you're you know you're doing that? Yeah, you're writing songs and doing those things. Like, I mean, I feel like I didn't even really I guess like so songwriting. Like honestly, I didn't really start writing actual stories probably until this year. And I think that's probably because partially being a music major and having to kind of, as a vocalist, uh, you have to learn so much about your songs that you're singing and studying. You have to do all this research and stuff. And I feel like you do the same when you're being a role in a musical, per se. You're studying that character and kind of putting yourself in their shoes. And so you develop all these new perspectives on someone else's life. In addition to also you're reading all this literature. For example, you're reading Shakespeare. You're learning all these symbolisms and metaphors and how you can con connect that all to your own life. And so I think kind of like having that background helps you a lot with that. But I've also found like for me, it helped me just find out like how, what kind of harmonies can I mix in with my songs to make them sound the best. I guess that kind of comes from being in choir and acapella as well. Just kind of having that. So I think all of it really helps just to tie into songwriting and background and lead vocals a lot. You know, one thing that I've noticed, uh, you know, with, with some of your things that you do on your originals and also the stuff that you do is like the control vocally uh, is presented just in... in the runs and being able to like not have to be loud to be able to do a lot with the maneuverability inside the vocal range, which is uh, probably more from growing up in theater. I, I think that's more of a trained thing 
that I can definitely hear in your voice because uh, it's the control's crazy. You know, we talk about melody lines and stuff like that, but to be able to control uh, vocal range like that, which Max has a total killer ability to do Thank as you. well, which makes sense. Uh, Are you a theater kid? Oh yeah. <laughs> My people. Yeah, dude. I was like, oh, this is so I was president exciting. of my theater club. Like, are you kidding real me? Real theater kid. Yeah. Did you, okay, so what? I'm. This is. No, I'm. No, I'm let's taking do it. the. I'm let's sorry. I'm taking control of the ship let's right now. It. How many musicals have you been in? A ton. I'm guessing. If we're counting middle school, I guess seven or eight. What was your favorite? Uh, White Christmas or Grease. Grease. That's a good one. Because I was the lead in both. That's why. Okay, well, that's well, why I like the Shakespeare see, shows. I was a lead in Shakespeare. The shows I like are the ones where I have a lead, and that's where my ego really, <laughs> really shows. <laughs> that's so, uh, you, I mean, you get it though. So, like, whenever you do a show, you know, and you're embodying this character, like, especially when you're a lead, because you're on stage for like literally like two, three hours, it's just you are, you're always there. You never leave. Um, I think it was, I did The Tempest, which is a Shakespeare show, yeah, and yeah. I played Miranda. And I just remember that was the first time I was like, 16 so I like gained sentience you know how like you don't you just don't even think about anything until you get like 16 17 you're like oh I'm a person I need to start like thinking about deeper concepts um and I played her and I just was sitting backstage you know watching all this work that we had put into this and like just really taking notes this is the first time I'd ever like studied a character as deeply as I did with her because I connected to her so deeply and I was like but this is not me so why does it feel like me and I, I eventually came to the conclusion of like, it's just a vessel. You become mm -hmm. a vessel for I've, a greater thing. And I think if you can find one characteristic of a character, you can relate to them universally. Mm -hmm. That's what I always did is like try and find the one part of that character. Like they're either their one flaw or just something about their personality that you can relate to. And then you mm -hmm. just run with it. Yeah, and you just lock into it and the rest of exactly. it just falls in. So I think with, you know, playing shows and doing music too, it feels kind of similar. Like I'm putting on something else like I'm becoming mm -hmm. somebody else and I'm just like a, a a vessel for this story that needs to be told oh, yeah always uh, putting on a facade is what I would do mm -hmm. what I who I am on stage and who I am off stage is completely completely different people, different people. Exactly. yeah it's like a persona almost yeah which I guess a lot of musicians can probably relate That's, to that, like, oh, yeah. I just wrote down uh, band equals characters so is that kind of when you have a band does that feel more natural to you because of you have your 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 surrounding cast and you know, you do get to do the lead part because you are the songwriter. Does that feel, does that maybe feel a little bit more natural than being a solo act on stage for you? I mean, just, I know both feel good, but did it, mm -hmm. do you think that comfort level feeling so natural for you it, real quick kind of comes from that? I think it's, it, it is comforting to have other people on stage with me, but I never, at least I hope, you know, I don't ever feel like it's like I'm the the lead. It's very much a team effort. And like having, you know, them to to bounce off of also, it's like a, you know, when you come like an exaggerated version of yourself, it's kind of, but it is like a character to an extent because that's not, you know, you're not like that all the time. But especially with uh, Brady and Peter, it just feels like, it just feels like I'm hanging out. Yeah. Like it feels like well, we're just. And, and you're you know, in a totally serious role right now in this, you know, going to school to be a lawyer. That's not, uh, mm -hmm. a, you know, something that that's, an easy thing to do or that a ton of people do. So it's it's a very involved practice and serious. So to be able to kind of step into another world, mm -hmm. um, having that background, I think probably that m may help in some way that it wouldn't for, you know, like an old mailman or a vet tech or something like that. It's a weird uh, dichotomy for sure. Because it's, cool. it's like I go from like, you know, writing, like doing all this legal stuff during the day. And then I'm like, I want to go honky tonk for a little bit <laughs> for on the weekend. Yeah. But it's, it's a, it's a release. It's yeah. great. And I get to, it does feel, even though it is, you know, like a, an exaggerated version of myself, it still feels authentic. Oh, it's totally. I mean, yeah. you're writing, like you said, you're, you're storytelling. Yeah. It's I mean, like, it's, it's basically like, I mean, if I just told every person I ever met my deepest, darkest secrets, like within 15 seconds, no that's basically deal. what my songs are. I'm reading your diary. Yeah. It's them publishing my notes app yeah. after yeah. I die. Yeah. It That's is. what it is. It said it's not. It said you're not dead. It said I still it have to look them alive. in the eyes afterwards. Yep. That's the thing. You know what? They're not throwing me in the dirt after. Nice thing is that every every yeah. person I've written a song about them, they don't know who it is. Yeah. They don't know what's about them. Yeah, you exactly. write I'm keeping it that way. And then you hope they exactly. they like you and like the song. Oh, and they always like both. 
<laughs> there you go. As long as they don't ever ever find, I I really hope the people I've written songs about don't listen to my stuff. That there, would be. Uh, there are some that I'm like, if you found out, I wouldn't be mad. That's but. true. No, there are there are a couple. <laughs> well, okay. Also, I unfortunately have a tendency to write songs about killing people. I have never killed anyone. Let me put this on the record. That's I feel like no. Like. That's what a killer would. Listen, say. you you. I'm how totally. many bodies do you have to have to be considered a serial killer? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Three? I was going to say three. Three more than, like more than three? Any more so, than three. Or is it three? Yeah, you're getting into true... More. You're the true, cut, true crime guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah I right? Love, I love I, true crime. Yeah, I do yeah. love like serial... Like learning about serial That's killers and like the psychology of it all. And and so... And normally it's like the first one is like imperfected. Yeah, and then the second one... This is the most you've ever been perked up over <laughs> any... <laughs> Well, Any it gets me excited. Ever had. I think I, I really like that stuff and I find it really interesting. In, All right, what's the answer then? Serial killers, how many is it? So it's actually like it after the third one, then technically they are a serial killer because 99%, well, in two, it, it 99% of serial <laughs> killers are patterned. So it's like the first one is super just like, n just gnarly and just un, it, it's just raw. Second one, then they kind of have a little bit more of an idea. And then by the third one, they know exactly what they're doing, how they're doing it, when they're doing it. And Sounds then like how, like, like they almost, it, it's a game to them and it's like a perfectionist. He's getting more like, excited. Like, yeah, no exactly. I'm learning so much right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's just, you ever seen him? No, this is great. I really practice. like that shit. So, oh, really but I'm not a serial killer. What? That's that's what all a I gained from that. Would We're say. good. Well, so but then we too, she was taught earlier. She was talking about being being at like uh, Mud Creek or something, and being like, "Yeah, there no cell reception. You no know, cell you never know. At least four dead that, bodies. No, up seven. There, she so. said oh. seven. Yeah, there are at least seven dead bodies. I didn't say I put right, them so there. To be the fair, real question: <laughs> How would you know the number seven? So somebody that says they're not a serial killer but knows there's at least seven. <laughs> I think you're trying to tell us something. I think some really takes research. a long drink. Yeah, white clawed up over there. You've been caught. <laughs> we we are on I mean, our own uh, uh, true crime podcast. I didn't know I'd be going to jail crime. tonight. What are y'all, the cops? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. We are the furthest thing from cops. No. The furthest thing. No, no, look, you're going to school for law. We thought we'd put you to the test. <laughs> I plead the fifth then. Oh, okay. sweet, you win. There you go. Right on. I should have done that earlier. He's fifth but, and needs a lawyer. So I got a song uh, called St. Peter that's uh, about getting killed. And it's Ooh. about uh, getting shot by a woman with green eyes, which my wife Hell has yeah. green eyes. So she swears it's about her. I'm like, look, I was just trying to write a song that I thought was cool that uh, kind of had a, a Beatles sound to it. That's it. It wasn't about her. It really wasn't about her. It was just a story. But I don't know, man. Maybe it could be a in. prophecy. Yeah, I was going to say it might come true. Nah, she loves me. I built, I built her a greenhouse. It just takes a second. And then she that was a pretty sick greenhouse. Yeah, she can't not we went love on a little now, tour. Uh, she's in. Awesome. Greenhouse she's sessions. In. So that's me do the greenhouse sessions coming in 2025, evidently. We'll see how that rolls. We've said it. We've said it on, on the air. We got to do yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's, it's been put out there. All right, the prophecy. All right, so. I guess uh, what the, what we should ask now is like, what's next? What's next for Kate Justice? What's next uh, for the band? What you got going on? You got any? You got a couple of shows coming up. You said you think you I'm know, honestly those... just along for the ride. Are I know that's not the most with... exciting answer, but you know I'm trying to just book shows whenever I can. Um, with the band, you know Brady Brady has his own band, uh, yeah. Brady Evan and the Blue Collar Rebellion, and they are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so. Yep, we've seen them. They're right here. Very good. Fuzz, fuzz fuzzy Trace, pig. Fuzzy Pig yeah, was yeah, the yeah. last time I saw them. So, yeah, um, I play it. Actually, I am going to be playing at Fuzzy Pig this year, are which you? is exciting. So um, am I. It's going to be my so first. Are you, I'm uh -huh. sure. Really? Yeah. 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 It's going to be my first. We'll be bugging them about festival. it. I don't know. We'll just uh, we'll ask nicely. They'll let it. Let it. I'll, 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 I'll drop them a lot. Girl and them it. sounded amazing. At we had a great year. time. Yeah, your be, set was killer. It, it was a good time. It was killer. play around town. I don't know how many contacts you have. I will give you all the venue contacts that I have, yeah. so you can be awesome. hit up whoever you want. And I would do a show with you anytime. So I will hit you up to yeah, see definitely. if you're free for that too, because I'm always looking for folks to throw together. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I tend to just happen into shows. That's the best. Yeah. I'm really bad at like <laughs> actively going out and, you There's know, because I'm nothing better just... than just getting a message like, do you want to do a show? It's, it's the like, best. It's uh, like Christmas morning yeah, every time. Just... I'm like, yes, yes, please. You don't even have to ask. Just tell me when to be there. <laughs> it's amazing. I've been yeah. also very lucky to play with some really cool people, like, you know, opening for them or just being invited out to to shows and like doing a song or two. Like it's it's the best feeling in the world. It's such a, that's one thing I do love about the Louisville music scene. Is it's that's family. It's open immediately. It yeah, it's open for sure. It's a killer. Um. All right. So where what, anybody listening and watching, where can they find you? Where can they follow you? Where can they hear your music? Where can they do any of that stuff? All right. So I'm not on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, anything like that yet. Yet. Big yet. Um. But all my socials, I think, is at Kate Justice. C A I T Justice, like just ice no water. <laughs> at Kate Justice. Um, that's a uh, Facebook, Instagram. I'm on the TikTok as much as I hate to be on there. Um, Got to do it. That's it. Well, this will be out soon. So you will have some music out there, more music if you don't have videos. We also have some recordings. So we got to look into those. I know mm-hmm. Love Song is ready. Um, yes. We'll listen to that and make sure it's good to go. And if it is, then we'll just, you can release that. As soon as you want, then you'll have something on Spotify and all that. So you need fun. stuff out there. You definitely need to have stuff out there. You can also release this uh, Top Hill Sessions if you want. By all means, it'd be, that's another four songs. So cool. then you'd have five songs out there real quick. And I think these are killer. So, you, you know, I'm all for it. Um, so, you know, that's all I got to say about yeah, it. Thank you all so much for having me on. This has been oh, it's, it's been, been awesome. a fun time. Yeah. It's been awesome. Do you know where you're playing next? Do you have anything on the books? Yeah, look it up. You on can the do notes that. App. Yeah, hey, check it out. Uh, while we're while you're looking it up, uh, Max, where can people find you, buddy? Where can people listen to your music and do all that good stuff? You can find me at Max Donahue Music on Instagram. It's D O N O H U E. Don't mess it up. Um, <laughs> that's my music account. But if you want to follow my personal, uh, if you just feel like it, it's uh, max at dot max dot Donahue on Instagram. Both of those are on Instagram, and then the last one is the same on TikTok. And uh, yeah, I don't really have Facebook, so sorry about that. But you can find me as well on any streaming platform under Max Full Donahue. Album. album should have been out a week or two by now, so it's been out for a little bit. Um, take a listen if you haven't. Might as well. It will be worth your time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that'll be out everywhere. You can just find me on all streaming platforms at Max Donahue as well. All right. Spencer, my brother. What about you, buddy? It's just uh, Spencer.Corbin for any of your luthier needs or uh, you want to talk about guitars and nerd out a little bit or you know anything music related. Just hit me up. All right. You got those dates? Alrighty, um, me, Brady, and Peter are playing at Kingfish um, over in Indiana on Wednesday. I don't know what day this will be out, um, but I'm also playing uh, Tuesday. Or Okay, so this Wednesday is the 14th, August 14th. Okay, no. Um, August 27th, next... Next? That's a Tuesday. Not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after, August 27th. I'm playing at the Monarch for Katie Did Spotlight Series. Right I will on. be there. Very right. excited. We love Katie Did It. Love She's amazing. Katie Did It. Yeah, best. yeah, yeah. Uh, Hopefully, I think there's her and the Blue Fins, Blue Fin, Blue Gills. Blue Gills. Blue Gills. Katie Did It and the Blue Gills, I do believe, are going to be coming on here before too long. So that'd be awesome. I'm going to go ahead and say it. So it makes it come true. I have to so. now. Uh, what about Manifesting you, brother? it. Where yeah. you at, Earl? Earl Bowman, music on anything. I'm even, I'm on fucking TikTok too. So you, oh, can, yeah. you can, it's a plague, uh, isn't it's it? On, it? I don't post en- enough, but I feel like it's already too much. So yeah. like, I, I'm way too old for TikTok, but you can find me anywhere. Any, yeah. Where can, where uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, top of recording everywhere uh, on TikTok. I know Brad is still heavily doing the TikTok and a lot of Instagram reels, all that stuff, videos. So follow that, subscribe, do all that. On YouTube would be great. Um, uh, Neil Johnstone somewhere on there for, for me. Um, subscribe to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah just take a click. Like yeah, just yeah. Click. One little, a one little finger peasy. movement. And it takes longer little... to think about it than just to do it. Easy exactly. Peasy. Oh, and uh, speaking of the Monarch, I do know that they are, uh, we're pushing for membership. So musicians, people, check out the Monarch. Also, um, I believe it is September 3rd, which is a Tuesday. It's Wednesday, I think. 
September 2nd, then. Whatever that Tuesday is, there's going to be a songwriter night, kind of one of those deals. Uh, if you're a musician, songwriter, you want to show up. So, uh, That's how I got out. this job. That's how we did it. Going to one of those songwriter nights. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So, the third. Okay. It's the oh, yeah. third. So, it is September 3rd. third. It's it's uh, definitely open to members. I think it's open to anybody that wants to show up right now, but they're, you know, uh, looking for involvement and getting anybody. It's one of those things. It's not one um, led by me or led by Dusty. It's it's anybody that, that wants to show up and hang out and sit around and do a little picking and, and maybe meeting up with people that want to write with them and things like that. So uh, September 3rd, I know that's something that we're going to be pushing. So check that out. Also, uh, like we said, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Kate. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Bye.